Welcome to Call to Serve Your Friends. A shepherd knows his flock. And it's more beautiful when a shepherd also knows how to heal many of his flock. It is very beautiful to have with us today the Bishop of Belthangari, Bishop Lawrence Mukhuri, who has been such a beautiful, wonderful healer among the people, talking to them, working with them in a mission that has not only invigorated him, but the whole diocese. We welcome you to the program, Your Lordship. It, this is a program that we, uh, where we look at vocations and um, we always wonder and ask about when that first calling came and when did it come to you, Your Lordship? That is rather a difficult question for me because okay. I don't remember a particular incident okay. when I had this inspiration to become priest. It was all through my life. Okay. Uh, my parents were very devout Catholics and at home we had a very Catholic good atmosphere, okay. very prayerful okay. and very church loving. Okay. And uh, my, I lost my father yeah. very young, very young age. when I was just three and a half years. Yeah. But I'm told that when my father was alive, I was a small little boy, uh, I used to say, I'll become a priest okay. and uh, I will hear confession only of my father. Okay. <laughs> Not of any, anybody else. Anyone else. That's what told to my told to me my by my mother. Okay. I don't remember that. Uh, yet I had that uh, deep desire to become a priest. And my brothers used to tell tell me many things about the priests, and my sisters also fondly used to call me Lawrence Lobo, Lawrence Lobi, something something like that. Uh, I grew up in an atmosphere or society where Catholics are very, very few. Okay. I was the only Christian Catholic in the primary school where I studied. Really? And also in the high school where My I studied. Goodness. Those days schools were very rare. Yeah. I had to walk two and a half miles to reach the primary school. And all of them were non-Christians. Those days, uh, there was no nobody to tell me about the priesthood or that. And also in the high schools. But we were going to the church. Yeah. And uh, we had a very good Paris priest, very young, dynamic. And uh, our church was belonging to the Diocese of Mangalore. Okay. And the language was Konkani. Okay. Which language I did not know very much. Mm -hmm. Now I understand some. Understand yeah. I can speak Konkani those days. Uh, but he was a very good priest. And we used to go early to the church, go okay. to his room, talk to him. And uh, it was really a very, uh, very uh, happy, joyful moment of talking to the priest. Okay. And those days he used to visit us once or twice a year. Okay. The, it was a feast for us, okay. the priest coming home. home. And my mother used to prepare good dish okay. and good things for it him. It was like a feast, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And those days we did not have this scent and uh, powder. Okay. But there, uh, we had this uh, Lux soap. With that we will take bath and so that we, perfumes may come out. <laughs> you had to actually yeah. prepare in every yeah. way. For and him. put on the best dress of us yes. to receive him. That way priest was held in high esteem at yeah, home. That and uh, that also really might have encouraged me. I studied high school in Sulia. Uh, which was also very far away, far away from home. There also Catholics are very few. Okay. I was the only boy who was a Catholic. But going to the church, that kept on. That, that desire was in within me underlying. Yeah. After the 10th standard, also I could not take a proper decision. Yet I had this desire to become a priest. priest yeah. My elder sister one day told me, see, if you want to become a priest, you go to the parish priest and tell him. Huh. Uh, because there was no other guide like okay. uh, my brothers and mom they used to tell me about many things about Jesus, his okay. work, saints, all those things the sister told me and I obeyed her went to the parish priest and he was a very good parish priest, parish priest. Uh, a senior man okay. very devout and uh, very God fearing and church loving and he agreed my request, we applied to the seminary of Archdiocese of Telicheri. Okay. 
and immediately the bishop wrote back uh, come and meet me immediately i went together with my eldest brother and i was on the spot admitted okay. to the seminary how did all the eight uh, i mean all, you were eight children together yeah, yeah, all yeah, brothers yeah. and sisters yeah, yeah. and your mother has really brought you up with so much love and care yeah, yeah. how was their reaction and, and how did they really celebrate your uh, wanting to be i uh, actually all were happy okay. but mother was happy and she was sad also in the sense because you had to leave home yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah i got the letter the letter from the bishop and i ran to my mother with the letter telling that i am admitted has to come then i even now remember she stuck her breast like this Uh, uh she felt bad to leave me yeah and uh, then i went joined the seminary i was there for uh 6 uh, months I, i i could return only after 6 months okay and she uh, felt my absence very much yeah yet she was happy those days coming home then sharing many experiences Uh, reading bible singing songs she was yeah. happy that yeah she surrendered then i had my minor seminary uh, but i had uh, no chance of learning lot of catechism when i was at home okay. because uh, i b- am basically of uh, kerala to origin born and bred in karnataka i know kannada and malayalam and konkani i do not know that catechism was in konkani and we could not go the seminary so it was a concern for me because mm-hmm. all my friends classmates have learned catechism and they know much better me than me the religious matters okay so i surrendered everything and was staying and there was a class called subject called religion in the huh. in the seminary religion is actually catechism yeah i was really frightened within me because my all my classmates they have learned they have diploma certificate okay. i don't have a diploma Uh, and they the class was in malayalam okay and i do not know malayalam reading and writing okay. so i have to take now notes in english okay others in malayalam so definitely i thought i'll uh, for the examination i will fail okay. all others will score high marks the um, examination was over when the results came i was the first in the class wow <laughs> that must have been a miracle or you must have studied uh, hard uh, for it and also i now look i looking back to my life i think it is a work of the holy spirit yeah. he teaches us yes uh, he offsets what is yes. lacking in us when we surrender ourselves it is the lord who absolutely. does it absolutely so uh, when you asked about my occasion um, i think uh, for me uh, my my occasion is the work of the lord yes he from all eternity designed that i should become a, a priest also i i should become a bishop yes because i want to share a, a, a very interesting thing those days no we are eight children and uh, sometimes my mom used to entrust me to my elder sister and go for some other work and she uh, my elder sister is no more she died 3 years back and before her death she was telling me and sharing me an experience sometimes you it said i used to cry very much okay cry cry very much then she used to take me and put uh, make me sit on the chair uh, used by my father okay. nobody else would sit on the chair of the father and make me sit on the chair and my mother had a very long uh, uh, rosary okay uh, and she will put the rosary around me and uh, uh um, make like this and all the ladies bishops used to put this way yeah and put this uh, rosary like this and she will uh, call say in malayalam uh, lord suti you are a good boy you are a bishop okay <laughs> then so all she, those things are happening uh, yeah, now yeah she told me yeah. and that time i used to stop my cry okay which means i don't remember that but she remembers uh, i think that was a premonition like that i should become a bishop later on it was lord's design yeah so occasion is really occasion called called by god he so, calls and he anoints those whom he likes yes yes absolutely. those whom he anoints it, it does not depend on the merit of each one yeah. it is uh, the merit is in the might of the lord yeah uh, maybe some may be very intelligent some may be very uh, what is that um, uh, meritorious but he calls those whom he likes
and you chose to love and serve as your motto. That is my motto, uh, because my faithful, my people in the diocese, yeah. are mostly migrants from Kerala, okay. and there have been in Karnataka for the last 60, 70 years, and those who came in the beginning, most of them came barehanded, mm. and they had a lot of things to suffer, okay. and uh, I really have compassion for them. Uh, they need a lot of love and I, I need to serve them. Even if, suppose they miss the track and do something wrong, I should not shout at them. Okay. I should not punish them. I must serve them. I must have to be compassionate. You are them. fostering them actually. Uh, yeah, I, I stick to that. Yeah. And that has been my uh, vision of life for the priest souls. Okay. Uh, priest should, should be after the art of Jesus which was very compassionate. He found the crowd as sheep without shepherd, yeah. and he had compassion over them. We read yes, that in the yes, Gospel. No? Yes. So priests and bishops have to compassion over the okay. uh, sheep. That is almost the vision for the church, you mean? Church mean, and uh, the present Pope is very much known for his mercy and yeah, compassion. Absolutely. And uh, mission, uh, if, if one have to say the mission, see, in India, uh, Christianity is a very tiny minority and uh, still less is uh, Catholics. But Catholics and Christianity have got a great role to play in the life of the country. Absolutely. Uh, we have to be the conscience of the nation. Uh, the famous prayer of the Upanishad, Tamaso Ma Jodir Kamaya. Yeah. Mrityoma Amardangamaya and Asadoma Sadgamaya. Lead me to, uh, from death to life, from darkness to light, and from untruth to truth. As an answer to that, perhaps as though as an answer to that, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the, the truth, truth and, and the life. And church is the body of Christ who declares this, I am the way. So we have to show the way we have to show the life yes. and we have to show the truth. Yes. And people are really thirsting for the way. They are in search of truth and many they are places, in search of life. Many ways, yes. And really gospel is that. Yeah. When we preach gospel and spread the message of gospel, it's a life giving. Yes. And it is appreciated by everyone. Uh, though there are some very fundamentalists and uh, rationalists, Nobody can question the merit of gospel. Absolutely. Nobody Very can true. question. Very nobody, true. That no, is the truth. Yeah, nobody can question that. Yeah. Because it is, uh, it is the, the rule of life. Yes. I have a number of non-Christian friends. Okay. And they love me. I also love them. They respect me. I have a lot of interaction with them. All through my life. Now I am priest for 40 years. Wherever I go, I always go in cassock, in India. In the plane or in the train or in the bus, any time, day and night I wear this cassock. I have a special reason also for that. Okay. Reason is this, this is the uniform of a priest. When I wear that, I become serious about my vocation. I am reminded of my vocation. Secondly, this, is, this also gives an indirect evangelization. Anyone who sees me and he is a stranger to me, he may ask, who is this fellow with long garb, which is not needed for an ordinary man. Yeah. Then there will be some people to tell him, see, he is a, a disciple of Jesus. Jesus, son of God, savior of the world. That indirect that, uh, evangelization will take place. And also, I, want, I do not want to hide my priesthood yes. anywhere. I have become a priest deliberately, and I have asked for my cassock, it was not thrusted on me. Praise God. It was, uh, I asked for it and I got it and I wear it whenever I go. So in my life as priest and bishop, bishop for 20 years now, 19 and a half, and bishop, uh, priest for 20 and a half years, never had a bitter experience. Praise the Lord. Wherever I go, people are happy to see me as a priest, Praise now as a bishop. Praise the Lord. And uh, there is a smile on the face of everyone Praise looking at me, St even strangers. Maybe in the airport, 
maybe in the railway station, maybe in the bus stand, where in the city, anywhere, they, they are happy to see me as that a priest. That is wonderful. That is wonderful, Your Lordship. There is something about your ring. Uh, this is, see, Episcopal ring. Yeah. All the bishops have it. Yeah. Uh, I but have you, marked some words. Yes. You, you can read, my Lord, my, my Lord, my God. Uh, so when I, uh, there is an unwritten tradition in our community okay. that when someone from a family becomes a bishop, it, it is the privilege and the, uh, uh, and the uh, obligation of the sisters to donate an uh, Episcopal ring. Okay. So this ring was given by my sisters. Okay. So they were preparing this ring and then asked me, uh, how should it be? Then I said, it should, there should be a cross over it. Then uh, you please write, my Lord and my God. It was done deliberately because okay. My Lord and my Lord, as you know, is the declaration or the declaration of uh, Saint, Saint Thomas, Thomas when he found the risen Lord. Yes. I belong to the Syro Malabar Church, which was founded by Apostle Saint Thomas. Yes. So whenever I see uh, my Lord and my Lord, I remember Jesus, plus I remember Saint, Saint Thomas, Thomas, who declared the made the greatest yeah. tenet of faith. Yeah. And also this you saw see this ring is a uh, this wedding ring okay. of a bishop. Theologically, it is, it is a covenantal. Yeah, uh, uh, theologically, uh, the, theologically, the uh, bishop is wedded to the diocese. It's a commitment ring. Only. Yeah, it is. Uh, wedded to the rice. So this wedding really like that way. So uh, this wedding is done with Jesus. Yeah. I am committed to the Lord and to His church. Yes. And this reminds me of that commitment. Yes. Yeah. So you've made it very special. Yes. And were there times that you feel, and especially because you are so much into the healing mission, yeah. Your Lordship, yeah. and uh, many people are healed through yeah. your services, and they come to you, and they also, many families have, have been healed. Yeah. Um, what do you feel, is that a rewarding moment for you? I remember the first incident of my healing ministry. Immediately my ordination as a priest, I happened to visit a Muslim house. Okay. There was child, small child suffering, okay. and I asked whether I can whether I can pray. pray yeah. They agreed. I prayed, and the child was healed. Praise God. And uh, praying of the sick people has been my habit ever since my ordination. And it was in 1991 I got into the renewal. Okay. Uh, I will be. You will be happy to know that I came to for a retreat to a very divine center yeah. in 1991. That time, At it's that a time, time it's of my budding place, yeah, getting yeah. more interested in the renewal moment. After that, I uh, started preaching. I'm the one who started uh, Canada ministry in Karnataka. Okay. Uh, those days, uh, we used to, we, I had a team as a priest, and we used to preach Canada. And uh, God, Lord has been very generous. Uh, he was he has been working among with, with us, made us instrumental in healing many people. And it was a very rewarding ministry. Uh, for me as a priest, the most happy moments of my life yeah. are preaching the word of God yes. and helping the people yeah. and people suffering from various difficulties, their own personal problems, family problems, sicknesses. And uh, I speak to them in the name of Jesus. I speak to them the word of God. And many told me, when we talk to you, Bishop, now we are Bishop formerly, we, we feel as though we are speaking to Jesus. And it's, it's making us feel at home yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I was so happy. And there should be the mission of every priest yeah. and Bishop. First and foremost, we are called to, to be with Jesus and also to proclaim them. Where the sheep is comfortable with the shepherd. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what are those times when you felt challenged when you felt those challenging moments coming in at you? To be frank, in all my life, I did not have any crisis in that way, crisis. I did not have crisis as a priest. I was, I've been very happy. Then, uh, challenging means, uh, for my, there had been no blockage also for my mission. Okay. Uh, almost all, of, all, all the time I was happy. Uh, I was very friendly with my bishop. And priests also were very good to me. And I remember uh, my people, wherever I go. I have been Paris priest for many churches. 
they were uh, considering me as their own family member. I too considered them. Yeah. Uh, when I appo was appointed a priest, there was an interview with some people and asking them, what do you think about this priest? I remember, I did not know, but that, is, that came in the paper, telling this is a priest who loves the parishioners as his own family members. Praise God. And uh, parting with them was very painful for me. Yeah. And uh, they also loved me and I loved them. And I had no problem that way. But sometimes, you know, uh, financial difficulties are there for yeah. our mission. Sometimes that worries, sometimes worries. Yeah. But the Lord has been also generous in that. He yeah. never failed he me. He provides. He never yes. failed me. He has provided. And uh, your Lordship, um, there are many, many young people listening to a program. Yeah. And what is your message for them and for the families, your Lordship? With respect to occasion, okay. I plead and pray to the family, uh, parents, if the Lord calls your children to become a priest or to become a sister, never... Never come as an obstruction. Yeah, never object them. Because if you obstruct their calling, it's not good for you and yeah. for the family. Anyone who comes against the Lord uh, will face the yeah, consequences. Absolutely. And how do you know that one has a occasion? It is a strong inner f urge and feel a desire to become a priest or a religious. Secondly, you should have the sufficient physical and intellectual and mental health. Thirdly, you should be selected by the church authority. Yeah. And these are the criterion of a person who has occasion. So if one expresses and tells you that uh, I want to become a priest, never dissuade him. Yeah. Never dissuade him. Only tell him, I agree, but think once again. Yeah. Be serious on the matter. This is not a, sil yeah, this is not a silly thing. You have to see, think seriously be before you take a decision. Yeah. That is that. And you give all en encouragement. The Lord needs uh, ministers. Yeah. The Lord needs uh, religious people to spread his kingdom yes. and you know that today the church is what it is it is because of the tireless work of so many yes. priests and religious nuns and they have given their life yes. joyfully yes. and that's how the church the body of jesus is growing therefore we have to encourage them and and to young people i want to say that to become a priest is the greatest rank and dignity that a man can attain on earth praise the lord Praise the Lord indeed. Because you can never attain anything greater than to be a priest. Because the specific duties the priest is accomplish, accomplishing are incomparable to anything in the world. Yes. Anything in the world. Therefore, uh, we don't believe in rebirth, yeah. physical rebirth. But just for saying that, if I have got another life on earth, I will become a priest. priest. Praise the Lord. There was a reason why uh, Pope Benedict XVI decided that you must take care of the interreligious, uh, you know, the, the mission. Because is that also, uh, were you interested also because in school and college you found yourself alone as a, uh, as a Catholic and did that kind of help you in that relationship? Uh, there are many reasons. The major reason is, the gospel is a saving message yes. of God Almighty. Yes. It's not only for Christians, for everybody. Yes. And you can uh, reach this message, saving message to them by becoming friendly with them, yeah. by understanding with them, yes. with yes. love. And uh, uh, dialogue is that, understanding each other, sharing each other, and also loving each other. That is dialogue. Yeah. So that way only you can... Uh, uh, spread the gospel. Secondly, see, uh, we live in a context where the majority of the people are yeah. of, other of other faith. We have to respect them. And we cannot condemn them. And yeah. Jesus never condemned yes, them. Yes, absolutely. So he is not uh, partial to anyone. So we have to accept them and go with them yeah. and share with them. And many times problems erupt because we are strangers. Yeah. That is true. If we become familiar, if we uh, visit, their, visit them, if we can contact them, them. them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there starts the French, friendship and yeah. that is the beginning of the 
establishing of the kingdom of God. Thank you so much, yeah. Your Lordship. Yeah. This is such a beautiful time that we had where you encapsulated everything so wonderfully and your whole mission has become clear for us. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. God, bless, God bless you. It was really wonderful to have Bishop Lawrence with us. To love and serve is not easy, but for him it comes so easily. For him he has found it because he loves Jesus. My Lord and my God is what St. Thomas had inspired him to feel in his mission and he has taken it across with him at every step. We hope you have enjoyed staying with us and listening to us at this moment. We ask you to pray for all the priests and we look forward to seeing you again in our next episode. Thank you and God bless you.